Hello and welcome to In This Corner. I'm James Smith. Well, here we go again. Hollywood and boxing blending together to create a motion picture. Throughout history, there have been over 50 boxing-themed movies and classics like Gentleman Jim, Requiem for a Heavyweight, Raging Bull, Rocky, Cinderella Man, Million Dollar Baby, and most recently, The Fighter. Well, get ready for something different as robots get ready to rumble in real steel. And now, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for real steel? It's 2020 and fighters have been replaced by robots. Multi-talented Hugh Jackman plays a retired fighter, Charlie Kenton, who nearly made it to the top of the fight game, but not quite. Life after boxing, like with so many fighters, has been very difficult for Charlie. He now is a promoter of robot boxing. He ends up teaming up with his estranged son, played by Dakota Goyo, to try and take a trashed robot and make him a champ. I'm not going to tell you anymore. You'll have to just go see the movie. We caught up with Hugh Jackman and the great Sugar Ray Leonard, who was hired as the boxing advisor for Real Steel. All right, we'll do this boxing-esque, if you will. Tale of the tape for Hugh Jackman, hailing from uh, Sydney, Australia. Six foot two, a solid 215 pounds, 78 inch reach, a 17 year professional. <laughs> Over 30 motion pictures, countless Broadway plays, a Tony, an Emmy, hosted the Academy Awards, wow. helped Zack Ryder win a championship <laughs> with WWE, <laughs> and according to my Kiwi friends, they want you to do the anthem again uh, if the uh, All Blacks play Smitty. Australia. I'm sorry, but I'm anyway, impressed. Welcome, welcome to In This Corner. Yeah. Good to meet you. It's great to meet you, too. When I sang the national anthem for Australia, we lost 32 nil. So the All Blacks <laughs> That's why me. they want me. <laughs> That's, that's pretty amazing. You've done your research, Smitty. I have. Oh, well, I'm, I'm used to you know, getting in the ring with the greatest fighters in the world. and uh, it's a, it Actually, when I think about you, you, a lot of times I like to describe a fighter as an all-around fighter. He right. can box. He can right. punch. There's nobody in Hollywood with the versatility of you. You can sing. You can dance. You can act. Well, you, uh, how do you manage all those skills into one package? When I began as an actor, I think it's fair to say... I never had that thing over my head like, this guy is going to be the next great actor. I felt like I was, I had to work harder than anyone else, right? That was, and in Australia, it's a small, you can't just be a film star. There's only 10 movies made a year. So pretty much developing every skill for me was a way of staving off unemployment to begin with. And it was my protection. And then gradually, I kept working at him, working at him, working at him until I felt, you know, like confident in all those disciplines, you know? Boxing. I call fighters the most common and uncommon of all athletes. I had a brief boxing career because I had a problem. I didn't like getting hit. <laughs> so that made my career. But fortunately, I get a chance to get in the ring with all the great fighters on my show. What? I understand your dad used to box. Yeah, my dad was a boxer, and he never talked to me about it. I found out when I was about 16 because my brother and I were at it every day, just punching each other. So he said to me, he made the decision he was never going to talk about it for fear of us glorifying it, right, and therefore just hitting each other. But when I told him I was working with Sugar Ray Leonard on this movie, I could see in his face, he was like, I knew you were kind of doing okay, but man, you're really doing okay. Like, And when I saw the movie with my dad, at least two times, maybe three, I looked over, I just quietly took a look at my dad and I could see him crying. I, you know, he's he was a boxer. He said when he won the British Army Championship in 1955, he was put up to another level. And probably a little like you, he, he got knocked out in his first fight. At, it was probably like Golden Gloves level. He, got, he says, I never saw the punch coming, and I realized I was way too slow. You know. What are your first memories of uh, professional boxing, and what fighters did you look up to when you were coming up uh, in Australia? My first memory is Muhammad Ali. Uh, again, I told you we were not allowed to watch it at home. But I remember the song, Muhammad. <laughs> Muhammad Ali, he floats like a butterfly and stings like a bee. I don't know who sang that one, but that was a big hit in Australia. And and we were all in the, all of us would pretend to be Muhammad Ali, then Sugar Ray. And I really remember watching it 
when Mike Tyson came to the fore. That was when I was I was a teenager, maybe 16, 17, when he started coming through, and he was like a hero. Like when you're 16, 17, someone like Mike Tyson, he, uh, we were just all in awe of him, you know. So that's when I really started to watch it. And I got to tell you something. I know Mike quite well. Mm. A little bit upset, maybe not with you personally, right. but a little bit upset that you got the honor of world's sexiest man over here. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm happy to give him that one. He, I know you. I know that. you did a lot of studying, research on him when you were uh, for your part in, yeah. in of course, in X-Men with Wolverine. Wolverine. Yeah. You watched a lot of Tyson tapes. What did you pick Lots. up? Well, the thing that I got out of that the most was from the moment he hit the ring, there was not an ounce of fear in him. He had a little bit of that smell of I want to take you down quickly. He was obviously very quick. His technique was, I think, deceptively good. But he was in all the time, in. Like, there was no waiting back, no, like, scoping out there. He would just get in there, and I think that would freak out other opponents. I don't remember another fighter like I'm sure there were, but he's the first one I saw that seemed fearless and wanted to finish it in 15 seconds, you know? And so for Wolverine, I always took that as a great starting point. Wolverine is, he's not fighting to look pretty, look great. He's fine to get you to chop your head off and as quickly as possible, you know, just to get it done, you know? There's a focus. You know, I'm, I'm the only reporter to have been inside the ring with Mike. We did yeah. an in-ring segment. He actually tapped me, and I, I had a little bridge here that fell out. Uh, but there's a, a zone, <laughs> a focus, you know, that he gets in. And I asked Christian Bale this before the, uh, the fighter came out. I interviewed him and Mark Wahlberg, and I, I said, for you acting, What's the toughest part? Because, you know, Christian really goes through. You did the prestige with him. Yeah. He, he goes through a lot in, in preparation for movies with his body. What's tough, toughest for you, the mental, the physical preparation for a movie, or does it depend on the movie? It does depend on the movie. Uh, I think it takes a lot of discipline. If film acting is very different to stage acting, where you it's like you have a fight every night, and you run it from beginning through to end. In a film, it's taken over a three- or four-month period. You can spend a whole day on a scene, and you can start to obsess about that. But in the world of the film, it's just a, a little scene. So you have to be able to really... Funny, focus is a great word. It's like a cool, calm, focused energy where from the beginning of the day at 8.30 right through till 8.30 at night, you have to be on it. You can't be warming up by 12. You can't... There's. I know you get different takes, but... The camera moves on and that scene's done or you know you, you really have to you have to stay incredibly disciplined and focused and you have to have a game plan you know, punching guys bigger you're gonna have to punch up that's it nice. what? You too old man huh. hey, come on let's get to work Nice. Let's do that again. Nice. Three punch combo. Combo. Again. Again. Fast. Fast. Nice. You know you're not a breath. I like it. Okay, I see how you move. Talk about real steel. Tell yeah. the fans what they'll be uh, witnessing. Uh, I really enjoyed the movie. I Thank went in you. there wondering, but as a, a boxing guy and uh, watching the role, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed your, your movements. Ray did a good job. Tell Thank us about you, real man. steel. That means a lot to me, man, because uh, Ray and I talked a lot about how people like you would see the film. And for him, of course, it was important. He, I remember him looking at me and said two things, man. You're the cornerman. You are Angelo Dundee in this movie. He says, when you're in that outside and you're looking in, you've got to have it here. The strength, the wisdom, everything, the emotion. I think the movie Real Steel is going to surprise a lot of people. It's got a lot of cool action. Yes, there's robots boxing. My kids love it. I mean, I, I, to some degree, I love it. But it's got a lot of heart. The movie's really a redemption tale about this father, son, and this robot. And you end up cheering and yelling and screaming for these robots, um, precisely because of the people around the sport, the father, the son, these people who are really putting all their chips into the, into this world. And you know, it has a Rocky esque theme to it. Completely, too. you know, it it really does. I mean, I loved Rocky growing up. I loved all the Rockies. 
Sean Levy, who directed, loved all the Rockies. And I watched Rocky One again. And it's it was heartening to me because, you know, Rocky's not a, such a great guy at the beginning of that film. He was a standover guy. He was a thug, breaking people's knees if they didn't pay up. You know, he was caught in this world and he couldn't get out of it. And it's actually this, it's a movie about second chances, which is exactly what Real Steel is about. Relax, Kitty's on our side. Not funny. Yeah, kind of funny. You know, he has voice recognition, right? No, he doesn't. No, he didn't in the lead. But when Noisy fought in Brazil, I must have put it in. Right, left, uppercut. Doesn't work. Right, left, uppercut. I knew that price was too good to be true. Give me we a got second. Screwed. Let me see if no. I can fix it. Look at God. Look how good he looks, too. Give two too seconds. Let me look at something. Why didn't you ask the guy to have a look at him? Nigi, he done. Oh, what's that? Is that Japanese? Apokato Nikai. Let me see if I can reset him to English. Hang on. How the hell do you know Japanese? Video games. You know, whenever I interview the uh, the great fighters of today, I interviewed Floyd Mayweather a couple of weeks ago, Manny Pacquiao's got a fight coming up. I asked these guys who've accomplished so much, what's next? What are your goals? For me? What are the goals of Hugh Jackman? I hope Mayweather said a fight with Pacquiao. Did he say that? <laughs> yeah, well, if, if Manny takes the test, he's ready to fight him. So hopefully we'll get it. these two inside the ring. But what about for you? What are your goals? I, I try to avoid specific goals, like I want to win an Oscar or I want to do this or that. Because at the end of the day, I find those kind of goals in an acting sense limiting. Um, pretty much everything that has happened to me in the last 10 years, Smitty, I wouldn't have thought of 15 years ago. So if you set a bar, wherever that is, you may have to go way above that bar. So my bar is about continuing to work, to grow, to uh, to take on parts where I'm 80% confident but 20% terrified. That feeling that I'm challenging myself all the time. So, uh, however. I have for a long time wanted to do a movie musical and because uh, I've done musicals on stage, I've done movies, I've never combined the two. So I'm, And I'm about to realise that dream in doing the movie version of Les Miserables, uh, which is a great musical, and uh, so I'm going to do that next year. So that's, that's one of the specific things I can tick off. But for, for the most part, I just don't want to take anything for granted. I, I want to keep working hard and keep challenging myself. Well, I think Real Steel will be a tremendous success, Thank and it's you, been man. our great privilege to have, pound for pound, uh, one of the uh, the great entertainers, Hugh Jackman, Thanks, on in Mitty. this corner. Thank and you. And I, I only have to correct one thing. At Wolverine, I'm in the 220s, but right now I'm like You're, 195. <laughs> I, had to give, I had to keep you as a heavyweight. We need a, we need a heavyweight. You need a heavyweight, true. Okay. I, I still have the reach, though. So. You punch him with conviction. So you, you're trying to... The greatest relationship is as a trainer... Boxer. Yes. And you try, you got his eye, right? So you yeah. Just, and you got shot. I mean, it's like yeah, you get it. Yeah. Uh, for make everyone. Him, yeah, yeah, make that's him right. feel what yeah. you what you throw him. You want? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Come on. Yes. 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 That's yeah. good. So you see what happens? Now yes. your punches are better. Yeah, and he's better, getting him perform- emotionally yeah. involved. Yeah, in the- yeah. Emotionally involved. involved. Yeah. Ray, how did the, your involvement with Real Steel come about? Um, I was approached by a friend of mine, uh, Stacy Snyder and, and Gary Jones, uh, about uh, being involved with a, a movie uh, that's about boxing. And I jumped at the idea because it was such a a wonderful experience having the chance to work with Hugh Jackman um, you know and my whole objective was to kind of show him how to properly execute the punches and also to to, to look and and feel like a, a, an ex-fighter or, or a trainer and um, because of his I mean he's an athlete anyway and he's an incredible actor he was able to put those two together and look the part and then I had a chance to kind of choreograph the robots and give them each their own distinctive style. That too was a challenge, but it was fun because those robots, I mean, because of the technology, Smitty, they are so agile and so flexible and so, so realistic-like. 
that there's a human nature to these these pieces of metal. They move better than the Klitschko. They do, without <laughs> question, without question. And I truly love it. I had, a, I had the time of my life. What's the most difficult thing in, in, uh, to get a guy in the mindset of a fighter? And that's what I think works so well in this movie. He was already in great shape. You, you, you got him looking at mechanics like a fighter. But mentally, you said some stuff about Angelo Dundee, and it got the focus going with him as well. Yeah, because I, I kind of use that as a, 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 a uh, blueprint. I say, my trainer, Angelo Dundee, we had a connection. In other words, he didn't have to say too much just looked at me. I, I, I read that uh, you know that communication there, and um, because you don't always have to talk, sometimes you can just feel it in the eyes. And he understood that, and he digested it first, but he understood that, and he brought it to life. It's been about 60 motion pictures with boxing as the backdrop. What's your favorite all-time fight movie? It's not just one. It's maybe unfortunate. Well, fortunate. I can't say just one. I mean, from the champ to the fighter to Raging Bull to um, well, Hurricane. Uh, did I say the fighter? I mean, to Real Steel. It's though because it's, it's that human element. It's that emotional content that is so heavily involved. And the fact that Real Steel is great because it's for the whole family. It really, really is. The Big Fight, your uh, new uh, book that's out, and we'll talk more about this at length uh, when we get back to Vegas together. But uh, how is that? How, how's the book going? Doing well, extremely well. And you know, it was a, it was something that I never thought in a million years I would have the courage to do, to talk about my life, good and bad, to um, reveal things that haunted me for so many years. Uh, but you know, Smitty, it was cathartic it was really therapeutic that I got the, that poison out of my system and I felt better my I felt less weight on my shoulders and uh, it's been a, an, an amazing um, journey you know of doing this book with my 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 writer Michael Alcush sounds like a real cleansing experience and you revealed so much we well, you know about Ray Leonard the fighter but we get to know about the, the Ray Leonard, the man, and the the good, the bad, and the and the ugly side. Uh, mm -hmm. um, marvelous Marvin Hagler. I'll see him at the uh, the I had a drink with him at the Hall of Fame this year, and I'll see him again. What 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 would you like me? What message should I give from Ray Leonard to Marvin Hagler? You know, uh, I, I would convey to him the fact that he is, without question, the greatest one of the greatest middleweight champions, undisputed, there is or there was. And I mean, although he, he, there's a there's a sour part of him because of the decision that was given to me, but that doesn't discount who he was and who he is and what people think of him. And he has to get over that. And a final message to uh, Mr. Pacquiao and and my friend Mr. Mayweather. Do it before it's too late. Great seeing you, Ray. Good seeing you always, right. man. You know, I'm not one of those guys who's into all the animation and transformer stuff. But I got to tell you, Real Steel was cool. The robot scenes were fantastic. And you know, I think Sugar Ray Leonard patterned one of those robots after his arch rival, Roberto Duran. I bet you boxing fans will be able to figure out which one I'm referring to. Rock'em Sock'em robots will never be the same. I walked into the screening of Real Steel really not knowing what to expect. I walked out with a huge smile. And you will, too. Go check out Real Steel. In This Corner wants to thank Hugh Jackman and Sugar Ray Leonard for joining us. Mm -hmm.